Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, I'm three marking, obviously, the best tank in the game. It's the one, it's the only, it's the TOG. This is a tier 6 British premium heavy tank with preferential matchmaking, so you never have to play against tier 8. This is probably the most healthy tank, I'd say, tier for tier in the game. When you take a look to see how many hit points other tier 6 ha tanks have, there aren't that many on my team. Whereas the, the Fury, the Fury's got 840. Where's the T-150? I can't even see him. It's like, where's Wally right now? Oh, there he is. He's got 1,070. Well, I'm packing big boy hit points at 1,810. Although a lot of that might be to the fact that I got peer pressured by my good friend Phil into getting a bond durability device on this vehicle. So this tank, it's incredibly slow. It's one of the slowest tanks in the game, limited to 14 kilometers an hour, which is another reason why you want to get the best turbo that you possibly can on this tank. A regular turbo will increase the top speed to 18 kilometers an hour. There is no slot opportunity on this vehicle, so a bounty will give you 19 kilometers an hour. And then the Bond Turbo, you'll see that my top speed is flickering between 19 and 20, because this thing doesn't have a very good power to weight ratio, it's less than 8. So it does struggle to even get up to that top speed limit of 20 with the abysmal power to weight ratio that this vehicle has. So, the TOG. How do I recommend playing this vehicle? This tank, a lot of people overcomplicate it. The worst thing that you can do in the TOG is to let go of the W key and not get to the fight before the fight is already over. So many times in the TOG, you are too slow to be able to get to the front and actually get into the fight before the battle is done. However, if you're able to get into the fight and fight against one single tank in a 1v1, you've actually got really good damage per minute. You've got like the Black Prince gun, it's not got the highest alpha, 150. That's still not great at tier 6. It's definitely not great at, at tier 7. But to have the Black Prince gun down at tier 6 with never the possibility of playing against any tanks that are higher than tier 7, then this thing is actually pretty good. It's standard pen, 171. That's perfectly workable. And if you're not a free-to-play player, gold rounds on this tank absolutely slap at 200. 39 millimeters of pen so you're going to be pretty much almost auto aiming at most of the enemy vehicles within that regard or even some of the more really heavily armored vehicles like an 87 maybe a cheeto sp or even possibly like some of the thicker plates on a t29 or um the new japanese heavy the gold just absolutely butters its way through them so as i said in the tog the most important thing that you can do is also did you see that 23 kilometers an hour down slope Woof! getting a nosebleed here from how fast I was going in the TOG uh, down slope. But the, look, the most important thing that you have to do in the TOG is just keep going forwards. The worst thing that you can do is to hesitate, wait on a flank. If you have an opportunity to go and fight some tanks, especially when you're in a matchup like this, you should do it. Even though I've literally been holding down the W key and I haven't let go of it, this is the fastest that any TOG could possibly get into this position. Already a third of the enemy team is destroyed, and they've lost about a third of their hit points before we even start firing in this game today. And so, keep that in mind that you must, must, must just be aggressive in the TOG and take the fight to the enemy team. And even though that's the arch nemesis of the TOG, the KV-2, ho, 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 he actually misses or he bounces his armor piercing round. And that lets us finish off the single hit point and then turn our attention to the Gorilla. We put an HE shell in. Now we're going to load AP because the HE shell penned. And I got 150 alpha, so it's very unlikely that's going to roll less than 129. And just like that, I don't mind going around the corner in a 1v1. And that's exactly what you've got to do in the TOG. You know what, M6, if you want to pen me, that's fine. Artillery is going to really annoy me in this situation because it's going to lower my rate of fire by 25%. So suddenly my damage per minute is not all that good. But again... Trading one for one in this vehicle, the three mark requirement in this vehicle is not all that high. It's pretty much the hit points in the TOG. It's like 1,800. And so accordingly, if you can trade your hit points one for one with the enemy team, then you should be absolutely fine in the TOG and you're going to be able to three mark this vehicle. The only thing that will really hold players back is if they don't have the confidence to just go in and then to be able to engage those tanks and then to be able to land those shots. By far the most frustrating thing in the TOG is when you get on certain maps, uh, like the uh, Empire's border map, where it's really long, you have to drive like a kilometer before you've even got to the front, and then when you're there, because there are so many fronts that the different vehicles can go on, that you're kind of just rolling the dice that they're actually going to end up on that front. And so, three marking the TOG is, is really simple, you just have to know where the the hot parts are of the map that hopefully you can be able to get to 
before they've cooled off or at least the action's been so hot that your team has melted and then they kind of outnumber you and while the tog is incredibly healthy and it does have a very good damage per minute uh, it doesn't really matter if you've got two or three tanks shooting at you. You're not really going to go down all of that gracefully. But it's still fun in the TOG to kind of like fight back. So those are my big tips for three marking the TOG. Now a lot of you be looking at my build and thinking you're using vents and not a gun rammer. Personally for me, it works out. Remember you can't have, uh, you actually know I, I tell a lie. You can have two builds on the TOG. So I guess maybe you could have the city maps drop out the vents and be able to use a gun rammer instead. But for me personally, the bond vents just give so much value with the ground resistances on this vehicle. They're going to improve my vehicle's ground resistances by about 3 three to 4% as they are bond vents. They're also going to improve my tank's accuracy by 3 to 4%, my aim time by 3 to 4%, and my view range, importantly. Even with a premium consumable, a perfect crew, and the bond vents, you can see we still can't get up to a an incredible spotting distance on the minimap on this tank. And quite often in the TOG, uh, after you've managed to bludgeon your way through the heavy tanks on the enemy team, then you'll actually need some of the view range to be able to catch your opponents out at half decent distances. And that was just a great moment. Just go to try to come around the corner, get me. Now we've got the RT possibly. Oh, lovely shot there. But now a M10 RBFM is going after me as well. And I'm just greedily getting forwards. You know what? If I die, I die. But it looks like that M10 RBFM is going to go down before we do. We're going to aim at the tracks there at the A20. And wow, we actually managed to pull it off. So hopefully we're even going to get that extra 300 tracking. And remember, when you're trying to three mark tanks, it's either the highest value of your spotting or your tracking. So by landing that tracking shot, we actually changed our kind of uh, roughly about 180 spotting to actually be 300 tracking instead. So great result at the end of the game for this marks wise 3000 combined game and this game was actually quite long we were lucky that it didn't snowball quicker uh it was pretty much about six and a half minutes this battle where we did pick up those six kills and importantly we just kept going forward so we kept firing and we kept moving while firing as well because quite often you're moving so slowly in this vehicle you're pretty much as accurate while you're moving as you are when you're stationary. So round two for the TOG, and while in the previous battle we were fighting against tier four tanks, which is as good as it gets for the TOG, this time it's kind of as bad, well, not quite as bad as it can be. There are some tier seven tanks on the enemy team as well as tier fives. The ultimate nightmare for the TOG is where you're having to engage tier seven tanks with only tier sixes, and when there are also self-propelled guns on the enemy team. Really, you saw that I was getting bludgeoned by artillery in that previous game, and it's just something that you've got to take. They're like annoying flies buzzing around the room and you can't really swat them until they get tired or in the case of World of Tanks, you've managed to uh, destroy all of their friends and then hopefully be able to get rid of the, the self-propelled guns at the end of the game. So it does end up being a little bit tricky within that regard, but uh, you're just going to have to take those shells. That's why hopefully you've got those hit points, but you don't really have the armor at least on top of this tank to be taking many artillery shells. Okay, so in this kind of a scenario, I was pretty close to the three mark. I think I was sitting at about like 94%, something like that. And remember, if so, about 1,800 is going to be holding. And then every little bit extra we can get on top of that is going to be our marks climb. And for every time you do double what the requirements in the battle, you're going up by at least a percentage, which is, which is very juicy indeed. So we're just going to have to see how much we can pick up here. This map's great for the TOG. We don't have to take, we don't take too long to get into position. It's only been like a, a minute and 40 seconds before we've got into position to be able to get our first shot off against this Swedish medium tank. And while we might take one shell from them, I was hoping that I was going to be able to finish them off and I'm very surprised that shell doesn't go in. But hopefully if they overangle a little bit, we'll be able to finish them off before they get safe. We don't want to leave Sega 1985 to 2023. It's a bit sad, really, when you think about it. Sega Dreamcast was, what, like, uh, 98 until about, like, 2000? Oh, feels bad, man. Did any of you have a Dreamcast? It was one of my favorite consoles of all time. So far ahead of its time as well, when you think about it, with that 28k modem. But I digress. I'm getting distracted by players' names and going into my, my childhood and how I kind of... That wasn't the console how I got into video gaming, but it was how I, at least I got into kind of, like, online gaming. I think, uh, from a console perspective, playing games like Fantasy Star Online and Quake 3 Arena. I was so sweaty, I had a mouse and a keyboard for the Dreamcast, and it made me incredible against all of those 
Joypad. Joypad? Gamepad? I'm going to call it a joypad. Those joypad warriors, they couldn't use the railgun in Quake 3 Arena. I have to admit. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We're going to go full story here. This isn't just uh, this isn't just three marking talk. This is also now story time with Quacky Baby. So back in the day, a lot of you uh, Zoomers out there won't realize, but internet connections used to be dial-up. And they used to actually have to connect to the internet via like a telephone line. And so it'd be like... That's okay. That's that's exactly what it was like. Okay, uh, and the the interesting thing was is that if the phone rang in my house and my parents picked up the phone, it disconnected the internet. And so, what happens if I'm in the middle of a game of Quake Three Arena and I've got quad damage, and suddenly? My mum's friend rings the house and she picks up the phone and then I can no longer be able to continue my railgun quad damaging, okay? It was a disaster. Imagine getting DC'd in that. In World of Tanks these days, you probably get reported for being AFK and be banned and you can't even be able to continue to play the game. Different kind of vibe back then. I digress for the second time. Um, the, so what I did as a kid is that I actually unplugged the phones. <laughs> So even when people rang the house, as long as the, my parents didn't pick up, and because they never heard the phone ring, they couldn't pick up that I didn't get disconnected. Yeah, it was it was good good times. Um, good times. Ah, oh, and look out! Look where we are now. Uncle Scrubby Baby putting out videos that get watched by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of people on on the YouTube's. Slamming scrub lords in their tog. The Chad of all tanks dealing with left, right, and center. 2,600 damage dealt. 1,800 hit points. Now we're into the bond durability at the end. And one of the beautiful things about the tog is it's so healthy that it's one of the best tanks in the game to take adrenaline rush on. And we have our adrenaline rush prop. And that's going to give us a better rate of fire than we would have had with the gun rammer, unless it was a bond gun rammer, I guess probably about equal to what we would have a Bond gun rammer on this vehicle for free. And so often you actually end up in this lovely amount of hit points. We've got less than um, 180 in the TOG and you can really start to go to town with those those last little bits that you've got. So as I said, I think we were sitting about 94%. So 2,800, that's pretty good. It's kind of like over half a percent climb so far, but we're going to need a little bit more. But really everything that you're seeing here in the TOG, that's what the TOG is all about. TOG is just about... It can't run away from things. It can't flank things. So it's just going to drive at things and out tank them. Or it's just going to have to make sure it hits all of its shots and just confuse its opponents when they come at it. As you can see, we've only blocked 260 damage. So the TOG doesn't tank intelligently. The TOG tanks with its face. It doesn't have a glass jaw at all. This vehicle just absolutely just... It's one of those heavyweight boxes without that glass jaw. Just an absolute chin of granite that just keeps going no matter what is flung at it. And talk about what is flung at it. Good night, T3485. And you know your tank is crazy when your adrenaline rush was procced and you took another shot and you're still alive. What other tanks in the game can really take hits? when they're already on adrenaline rush and still be alive to continue to give it. I guess really just like the mouse, if it gets shot by a light, like an object 140 or something. But the TOG just took it there. The TOG took it there. We've got 29 hit points left. We're up to five kills. We've done 2,900 damage with 43 assistant. The TOG is not meant to get up this kind of damage, but I'm just thinking like, what can I do with the TOG to be able to get through here? I was worried that the 1357 was going to flank us and be able to come after us. So much so that you see me blind firing, just taking a look to see if I can find him in the bushes. And I actually get spotted there, which I'm not happy about. And I don't really feel like taking any chances. Okay, so maybe we can be a little bit sneaky. The TOG is possibly one of the longest tanks in the game. And also, um, Wargaming, fix your TOG, okay? You see this sausage? This is not right. Drop everything that you're doing and fix the blooming sausage on the TOG. But because we're so long, we can actually look at this. How stupid is that? We're so long that we can actually wedge ourselves up into positions and get shots where practically no other tank could be able to do that. And it doesn't look like the Juto liked what I did to them. 
So they're actually coming after Tog to stop the Tog shenanigans. But luckily, I got a few shots left in me in this end of this game. We put one in, Adrenaline Rush allows us to get the second in, and there you go, another 26 damage into the Juto. Finishing off Fiskagenton there in their tier 7 Japanese heavy tank. And oh, I was feeling good about this. Feeling good. Because I think I knew that I had got just enough to be able to have the last battle of having two marks in a TOG. It's always satisfying, right? When you've got that last battle where you're going to have two marks. And we're giving a little bit of a, a salute here for what I guess eventually would probably become the YouTube glory. Although I'm not sure YouTube today would realize you found out that Quacky Baby was an absolute scoundrel going around and unplugging telephones before I set in for a few hours of a gaming fest. Luckily, my parents uh, saw the uh, saw what was happening and then eventually they got ADSL broadband, which never turned off. And so you could use the telephone while also their degenerate son was getting ready for a, a life of online video games that still, at the age of 36, absolutely loving. And with glorious tanks like this, how can you not love video games? This is the TOG, and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was three marking the best tank in World of Tanks. Redonkulous replay for a tank that a lot of people think is an absolute meme. However, this vehicle made a meme out of the opponents. It got a steel wall medal, but this wasn't a steel wall medal because we ricocheted shells. <laughs> This was a this was a steel wall medal because we literally just got penetrated 13 times and didn't die. 1,608 base experience, a top gun for those six kills. And while I did spam gold, this is a premium account, so it's still... Well, a premium tank on a premium account, so we still made profit. And the great thing about the TOG is that if you set it up like this and you play aggressively, it is capable of some crazy results. In the 36 games that I played in the last 120 days in the TOG, I've won 83% of those battles solo with 1,600 average damage per game and a couple of frags per battle. Honestly, this tank, if you get good equipment on it, you must have, in my opinion, at least a bounty turbo on this vehicle and hopefully a bounty durability device. It transcends from being kind of like this meme tank that people don't take seriously to being a tank that they certainly do have to respect in World of Tanks. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below if you were in a position like me when you were a kid and what kind of absolute crazy activity did you get up to to be able to get away with playing as many video games as you wanted and if you're watching this video as it's released on sunday i'm going live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby getting ready for a rinoceronte tech tree showcase which is now top of the tree so come along and see all of the italian heavy tanks so you can see why the auto reloading italian heavies are clinically underrated and actually very good if not very fun tanks to play and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon